The Theory of Political Economy by William Stanley Jevons Chapter 7 Theory of Capital Part 13 Peacock on the Dimensions of Interest The need of some care in forming our conceptions of these quantities is strikingly illustrated by the fact that not quite fifty years ago so profound and philosophic a mathematician as the late Dean Peacock completely misapprehended the matter. In the first edition of his celebrated and invaluable Treatise on Algebra, published in 1830, he gives the interest of money as an example of a quantity of three dimensions, and one which may be represented by a solid. He says if P represents the principal or the sum of money lent or foreborn, R the rate of interest of one pound for one year, and T the number of years, then the interest accumulated or due will be represented by PRT. For if R be the interest of one pound for one year, PR will be the interest of a sum of money denoted by P for one year, and therefore PRT will be the amount of this interest in T years. No interest being reckoned upon interest due. Such would be the result according to the principles of arithmetical algebra. If we now suppose PRT represented respectively by lines which form the adjacent edges of a parallelopipedon, the solid thus formed will represent the interest accumulated or due. In other words, it will represent whatever is represented by the general formula PRT when specific values and significations are given to its symbols. For in whatever manner we may suppose any one of the symbols of PRT to vary, the solid will vary in the same proportion. The lines which we assume to represent units of P, R, and T are perfectly arbitrary, but whether they are made equal to each other or not, this is clearly the case with P and T, which are quantities of a different nature, and the third quantity is likewise different from the other two, being an abstract numerical quantity, for it expresses the relation between the interest of one pound and one pound, or between the interest of one hundred pounds and one hundred pounds which is the quotient of the division of one quantity by another of the same nature. Thus, if the interest be 5%, then R equals 5 over 100, or 1 over 20. If 4%, then R equals 4 over 100, or 1 over 25. And similarly, in other cases, the line, therefore, which is assumed to represent the abstract unit to which R is referred, is independent of the lines which represent units of P and of T, and may, therefore, be assumed at pleasure equally with those lines. The lines which represent P and T form a rectangular area, which is a geometrical representation of their product. The third quantity, R, being merely numerical, may either be represented by a line, as in the case just considered, when a solid parallelopipedon is made the representative of P or T, or we may consider the area PT as representing the product PRT, when R equals 1, and that this product in any other case is represented by a rectangle which bears the rectangle PT, the ratio of R to 1. This may be affected by increasing or diminishing one of the sides of the rectangle in the required ratio. The product PRT may therefore be correctly represented either by a solid or an area when one of the factors is an abstract number. The conclusion at which he arrives is a lame one, for he thinks that the same kind of quantity may be represented indifferently, by a solid or an area. The fact is that Peacock confused a product of three factors with a quantity of three dimensions. He took these dimensions as if they were, say, M equals money, R equals rate of interest, and T equals time. If we simply multiply these together, as Peacock first does, we get a quantity, apparently, of three dimensions, MRT. If, according to Peacock's subsequent idea, we take R to be an abstract numerical quantity, then we have two dimensions left, namely MT. He overlooks the fact that the rate of interest involves time negatively, although he describes R as the rate of interest of one pound for one year. Correctly stated, the dimensions of PRT, the quantity of interest are M times T to the power of negative one times T or M. That is simply the dimension of the money advanced. If you say, for instance, that the simple interest of 300 pounds at 5% per annum for five years is 75 pounds, there remains no reference in this result to time. The 75 pounds is simply 75 pounds, 
and is of exactly the same nature as the 300 pounds which bore the interest, that Peacock subsequently discovered error, or at least difficulty, in this section is rendered probable by the fact that he omitted the illustration altogether in his second edition, but he does not, so far as I have observed, give any explanation 